All right, so we are talking about the seven goals when it comes to your economy. So remember that first goal was what? It was an improved standard of living. And how do we measure the improved standard of living? It was in a real GNI per capita. We could also measure it based on the human development index, education rates, and poverty rates. Okay. The second goal we had was economic growth, which we measured in real GDP per capita. And we wanted to know if our economy was growing, so we were looking at the change or that increase in real GDP per capita. Well, the third goal we're looking at is what we call full employment. Now, these first three goals, when you achieve one, you typically um, progress the other two. Okay, they go hand in hand. Uh, as we're going to see with some of the other goals, uh, the other goals may conflict. But the first three, when you achieve one, it helps with the other two. So let's look at full employment. What does that mean? Well, full employment means that everybody who wants a job has a job. Now, true full employment is impossible, right? So you're never going to have an unemployment rate that is 0%. You're always going to have some people who are unemployed. So when we talk about being at full employment, the OECD, which is the organization for economic cooperation and development, They define full employment as having an unemployment rate between 4 and 6.4%. So when we talk about the OECD, this is all of the competitive economies. So remember from our previous level, we talked about the uh, four types of economies. What were they? Cooperative, custom, command, and competition. So if we look at the competitive economies, uh, they are uh, members of the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, which tracks what's happening in terms of these cooperative economies. So we define full employment as having an unemployment rate between 4 to 6.4%. And that's because there's always going to be frictional unemployment. So frictional unemployment is voluntary. This is where you decide that you're tired of winters in Alberta and you want to pack up and move to the coast. So you quit your job here, you move to BC, and you start looking for work. Well, you are unemployed because you are looking for work, uh, but it's not an indicative of a problem with the economy. It's voluntary. You chose it. So we're always going to have some frictional unemployment as people choose to change jobs and change locations. So we're okay with some frictional unemployment. We're also always going to have some structural unemployment. Structural unemployment is unemployment that happens because of changes in demand patterns. Think about it. You don't buy the same goods and services that your parents did or your grandparents did. So it doesn't make sense that we would keep the same industries, the same businesses, as we had the generation before and the generation before that. So for example, what if your job was to make Betamax or VHS cassettes? Well, we don't watch things on Betamax. Uh, we don't watch things on VHS. And we don't even uh, watch much things on DVDs anymore. Um, so... Our habits are buying changes over time, so we need to make goods, different goods and services. So it makes sense that as our demand patterns change, we would lay people off who make VHS cassettes and DVDs and DVD players, and we would create new jobs in other fields. And so because of that, there's going to be some unemployment. And we accept that some structural unemployment is okay, because we are changing the goods and services we buy over time. Which is why when we talk about having full employment, 
we're still going to have an unemployment rate between 4 to 6.4 percent because we're still going to have some frictional and structural unemployment. Okay, so when we talk about full employment, we are going to measure full employment with the unemployment rate, the percentage of people who are looking for work who can't find it. So we want the unemployment rate to go down. So how do you make the unemployment rate go down? Well, if the economy is growing, we are making more goods and services, which means we need more workers to make goods and services, so we hire them and there's now less people looking for work. Now the challenge with full employment and trying to lower the unemployment rate is that, well, twofold. One, what if we had a, a command economy? So we said number one priority for our command economy is that we are going to give everybody a job. Okay, so we're going to create a job for everyone. Well, if your priority is full employment above everything else, then your sole priority is that everyone has a job and everyone gets paid. Well, that means that you can't lay off the bad workers. That means there's no competition for who to hire. We simply need to place everybody, give them a role which means that we're going to see less efficiency. And in fact, we talked about this in a previous level when we talked about the Indian Hindustan Fertilizer Corporation. Right? Everybody there had a job. Everybody there got paid. The downside, of course, is that they actually didn't make any usable fertilizer. So if we solely prioritize full employment, we're not going to be very efficient. The second challenge with full employment is the inverse relationship with the next goal we're going to talk about, which is inflation. So unemployment and inflation are inversely related. And we can illustrate this on a graph called the Phillips curve. So the Phillips curve shows us that when the unemployment rate is high, so lots of people are looking for work, then the inflation rate is going to be low. And when the unemployment rate is low, the inflation rate is going to be high. So let's think through this. All right, so the unemployment rate is high. It's going up. Okay, if the unemployment rate is high, then that means there is lots of competition among workers. Okay, so if there's lots of competition among workers, then who are you going to hire for your company? Well, you're going to hire the best for the least. So that means you got lots of choice, you're going to hire the best for the least, and so wages are going to start to fall. Well, if wages are going down, uh, cost to produce is going to go down, and ultimately, prices will go down as well. We can think of it another way. If the unemployment rate is high, then that means there's lots of people without jobs. And if there's lots of people without jobs, they're not buying things. Okay, so let's write this out. Unemployment rate is high, then lots without jobs. And that means they can't afford so low income or no income, which means their demand for goods will be down. And if goods aren't moving, if they aren't, people aren't buying them, how do you get rid of them? You put them on sale and prices fall. So when the unemployment rate is high, prices are going to be falling. Okay, because wages are falling and because people aren't buying goods because they can't afford it. So prices fall as well. Now, on the other hand, if the unemployment rate is low, then everybody's working. And if everybody's working, there's then less competition on who to hire. Right? It's hard to find a person to hire. And if you can't find a person to hire, how do you get good workers? Well, you steal them away from the competition, which 
how do you do that? You offer them better pay, so wages go up. And when wages are higher, that of course means the cost of the business goes up, and then they have to charge customers more. So the lower unemployment leads to higher wages, leads to higher prices. We can also look at it in terms of if the unemployment rate is low, we're all working, we're all making lots of money, which means our demand for goods and services are up, so we're all fighting each other for those goods, and that increase in demand for goods is making prices go up. So we have this Phillips curve, this inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation. And it's important to note here that it's unemployment that is driving to inflation. The Phillips curve makes no comment about the impact on unemployment. It simply looks at how unemployment is inflation. All right, so let's get to it. What's happening with employment? Well, you can see here unemployment over time. Notice late 20s, early 30s, what happened there? Right here. The unemployment rate in Canada hit 20%. Five people didn't have a job. Here you can see more recent. Here's that great recession, 2008, 2009. Okay, and then you can see closer to today. What is the current unemployment rate in Canada? So of course we can go to stats, recent information. And so the unemployment rate right now, of 2019, based on July of 2019, is 5.7 percent. We could compare the U.S. by going to Fred from the Federal Reserve. And we can see there that they're under 0.7%. So the U.S. is at 3.7, and we were at 5. Okay. Let's go back to our slides here. Uh, we can see our province, and so we can see Alberta here at 7%. Okay. And we can also look at youth unemployment. So the youth unemployment rate right now uh, is about 10.8%. Um, it's always higher than it is for the other provinces or uh, for large, right? We talked about that before, right? Who do you prefer to hire? You prefer to hire someone who has, which of course is why you are here uh, in this course. You can get those skills net. To the left, you can see the youth unemployment in 2015, uh, 0.9%. You can see there are countries like Greece and Spain, Italy, where the youth unemployment rate um, is 50%, so significantly higher. And this creates a lot of problem because if your older generations don't retire, it doesn't create new opportunities for those younger generations coming in. You can see a lot of um, civil unrest, lots of protests, um, and also um, in the government uh, because people get very unhappy if they can't find work. Now, question is, who is the world's largest? So we see here, it shows you that the largest employer in the world is the US Department of Defense. Second highest is the Chinese Army. The third largest is Walmart, and the fourth, McDonald's. So we can see here uh, what's happening in terms of employment.